so we will switch to English now. Uh, welcome, everyone. And I would like to introduce a couple of people that joined us today for the discussion and for the English section. So we have here, um, let's start from the this, uh, the people that I see on my screen. So welcome, Gianluca. Uh, he is from Impact Hub Vienna. So hi, Gianluca. Hi, hello, buonasera. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hello, Daniela. Daniela is from uh, Vicolo Corto. Hi, Daniela. Hello, dobre um, večer. Um, som Daniele. Uh, som koordinatorom europskih uh, projektov uh, Vicolo Corto. And that's my Slovak for today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was actually great. Uh, then we have here uh, Eliška from Mladý Infantry Republic. Hi, Eliška. Uh, hello, ahoj, ahoj všem. My Slovenština není tak skvělá jako Daniela. <laughs> My Slovak language is not that great like yours, Daniela, so I'll stay in English. <laughs> Thank you. And more, more than uh, the organizations, I would like to welcome today Ivana Merakova. She is the coordinator from National Agency in Slovakia, Juventa. Uh, hello, Ilka. Hello, hello, everyone. So I'm uh, responsible for European Solidarity Corps. This is my agenda. And we are approving of projects in Slovakia. So, Thank you, Ilka. And... Uh, Last but the least, it's uh, Bridget. Uh, hello, Bridget. Uh, she's our ex-volunteer and she's actually sitting right behind me. So I will just turn off my microphone so she can actually talk. And she's going to tell us more about her uh, story here in Slovakia and what are her plans for the upcoming um, period, let's say, uh, because I think her volunteering experience really pushed her to new experiences. And uh, so Bridget, the floor is yours and after the the story of Bridget. Uh, we are going to talk about the opportunities that uh, Impact Hub Vienna, uh, Daniela has, and also Elish kind of organizations. And uh, we will discuss a bit more what does it uh, what does it mean to be European Solidarity Corps participant or volunteer. So Bridget, the floor is yours. Hi, hello. I wish I had enough <laughs> Slovak language to be able to do it in Slovak, but still I have a few words, so it's okay. But um, yeah, I started my volunteering um, in Bratislava uh, last year um, from February to December, so it was 11 months. Um, and I found the project obviously online. Um, I was lucky because I was like one of the last people before Brexit. So I was, it was, yeah, I was really lucky. Um, but yeah, my project was, the focus was really in disability and integration I was uh, my hosting organization was Mlad Info and then I worked with an uh, organization called um, Dom Rafael um, and so I was working with a group of um, clients with uh, physical and learning disabilities um, and yeah the um, focus was integration in society and um, we I was working with another volunteer um, a Hungarian volunteer um, and so we were working there Monday to Friday, um, doing a range of activities. Um, we were focusing on areas of like independence and yeah, like just really, it was like a really incredible experience for um, the 11 months. Um, yeah, I think I, I, I found it really fascinating because I was really able to learn about um, like how the social care system works in a different country. And I think obviously each volunteering experience with the U um, European Solidarity Corps is completely different. But um, for my area, I felt like I, I learned a lot and my personal interests and um, what I'm personally interested in. So it really linked into um, my life and <laughs> my future career, hopefully. So yeah, um, yeah, and upcoming like on Monday, I, I will move to America to uh, in Virginia to try and um, pursue my disability integration interests and human rights really. Um, and it's like another project focusing on um, society integration really, um, paid employment with disabled people, which was also really pushed in my project um, in Bratislava as well. So yeah, yeah. Um, what else? I think, yeah, uh, I found the, uh, the volunteering experience was amazing, but also um, on the side, like being able to really explore a different country, a different culture. Um, I would say Slovak culture. I did not know much at all about Slovakia, I think. Maybe I'd heard of a famous Slovak YouTuber and that was it, but um, I really was able to um, 
explore Slovakia and I um, made a really good Slovak friend and I experienced some um, different cultural events and there was um, a few um, cultural events in Urojan Borok, I think you could say, um, and Donny Kubin and uh, obviously throughout the volunteering experience you have like midterm training and I found it really cool to meet different volunteers. I think this whole experience like in, in a different country especially when you go by yourself um you meet people you would never usually meet and i've made friends for a lifetime now, now um international friends that i've visited recently as well that and i really don't think our paths would ever have crossed so this experience has really opened my mind to like a whole new world really and i'm i'm really super grateful for it yeah so yeah that's it for now i think i don't know thank you bridget i uh didn't point out that Bridget actually comes from UK, so what you really can see from her English skills. Uh, if it was a bit too fast, don't worry, we're still recording, so we'll be sharing it later on. Uh, but you mentioned like your project was social work uh, and people with disabilities, and I'm not sure if you mentioned that you're actually uh, studying the social work uh, in UK, correct? Uh, yeah, so um, after high school, um, it was kind of like the COVID um, period. So I'll go slower now because I realize maybe I should go slower. Sometimes people just nod that. Okay, um, but yeah, so I was doing my I'm doing my degree online um, in social work, social care. So I was just doing that on the side, and I think I've um, I know a couple of other volunteers who were studying on the side and I think especially when your um, degree is kind of um, linked into what you're actually doing it's really useful because it's like you're you're very proactive and you're learning um, you're learning while you're doing the job and you're able to use that in your studying as well so yeah I, I, I found that I really enjoyed being able to use wide learn to um, in my studying on the side so yeah yeah. <laughs> Uh, can I ask about your next uh, opportunity that you're now going to America and you mentioned you were uh, going to some place like to a region, Virginia, I'm not sure, I'm not that familiar with your, the US regions and cities, but what is uh, your goal there? Uh, what, what are you going to do there and how did you get actually this opportunity? Because you mentioned to me when you came today in the office that like you've been waiting for visa for a really long time. Uh, so I think I guess uh, it's really worth it to wait for it. So what is it? <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, you mentioned the visa. This was probably the biggest thing of last year because I was the last person, like one of the last people before Brexit that I did have to get do the Slovak visa experience. But still, it was interesting. You learn a lot. But um, the American visa experience as well was uh, like quite a few months. But now I have it and I'm super happy. But yeah, so the project is kind of similar to the European Solidarity Corps, but it's more of an international, on an international level. Um, it's, it's there's different like uh, lots of different people doing internships working and um, volunteer it's like a real range of people from all around the world so you really have that kind of integration and being able to I don't know I think this was with Slovakia I loved being able to have like an international group of people but you become like a real community like and you're really really close and I think that's really important to be able to create that community environment on an like on an international level really but my project will it's focusing um so it's like a basically a village um uh with lots of um young adults and older adults with um, disabilities and it's just really trying to um, integrate these adults in society because I think there's still lots of segregation in lots of countries and there's lots of stigma behind disability and I think this is something that really needs to be tackled and I think for me it was really interesting in Slovakia and I hope in America to learn how the funding works and how the government is able to support and work with disabled people to um, improve their independence and to allow them to live their best lives really and yeah that's really what i'll be doing in america but it's focusing on working with them to gain um, paid employment and just exploring how the social care system works in america because for me i'm completely fascinated and i <laughs> it's like a, it's a whole different world i think yes that's uh that sounds like a lot of stuff to learn and to do um, one last question before we jump into the discussion uh, did you actually, do you think that you got selected because you already had like previous experience in volunteering or uh, uh, was it a factor for you when you were applying for this position? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure if it's the reason, but um, uh, I definitely 
feel like this project appealed to me. I actually applied for a different project um, when going to Slovakia, an education one. And then they, they said that there, this is like a new project and I was really interested in it. And um, uh, definitely um, it, it was like an incredible project. It really suited me. And I definitely think volunteering previously um, uh, helps because you kind of know how that works and being able to work in a team I think uh, that's something that's really useful and obviously um, I think volunteer work and paid employment is completely different and you have to you know you have to really want to do it and I did really enjoy it and I mean after six months I've come back and I'm in Slovakia now and I visited um, Dom Rafael um, the other day and it was like it was like I'd never left and I, I think that's really special to be able to have that kind of community in a different country and I think the volunteering element probably helps because maybe paid employment you leave a job and you go to a new one so it really uh, I think that, that was like a factor definitely but yeah yeah okay perfect thank you for the answer uh so now I would like to invite you all uh, for the discussion and uh, I would like to start with a brief introduction of European Solidarity Corps uh, and I would like to ask Ilka to make this like kind of brief presentation like what's the European Solidarity Corps and what are like the basic conditions for a young person to go for a mobility within the European Solidarity Corps and then we'll go to the organizations Okay, so I can briefly explain. Um, so uh, if uh, young people want, would like to participate and go for voluntary service, they should be between 18 uh, to 30. They can't be more than 30 years old. And I don't know if I should uh, share the screen and show you how to, you know, how like uh, young people can register. We will or go through the registration uh, in the workshop, so uh, we can do ah, it later okay. on, uh, but uh, feel free to stay also with us if you do not feel tired after your whole day, because just to update like uh, the rest of you, Ilka has been today in Prophecia Days, which is actually another event where people can actually get a job opportunity. So we're like after the job, also with the event. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, I was talking a lot about European Solidarity Corps and Erasmus Plus project. Uh, so uh, I, I would like to mention that um, all the people can participate and they don't need to be scared. Uh, they don't have like special skills uh, for voluntary service, but uh, the motivation is like the base and maybe expectations. I think uh, also that's what uh, Bridget mentioned actually like it's very important to be motivated because you, you are doing it for free. Also, people in the first section has been mentioning this uh, factor because volunteering is really your free time that you're dedicating to something. Uh, so, yeah. And I would like to mention that uh, th those people who are scared to go for long term volunteering, they can first um, uh, participate in the short, ter short term volunteering, which uh, lasts like from two weeks to two months. And then when they decide uh, that if they are still not 30, they can uh, they can do long term volunteering, which is from two months up, up to uh, one year. But uh, vice versa, it's not working like that. So they can't go for long volunteering and then short. So they can go twice, but firstly short and then long. Yeah, that's the basic rule. But for those who do not even feel for the short term volunteering, there are still youth exchanges that can be done uh, together in a group. So that's also kind of different type of activity within uh, Erasmus Plus program, not directly European Solidarity Corps, but still open for young people and they can actually go in a group. So this is really a huge advantage because you are not going alone if somebody is afraid of going somewhere alone. Uh, thank you, Yuka. We will be discussing more about the opportunities and uh, about how to do what uh, later on in the discussion. And I would uh, like to ask, um, let's start with Daniela because he's like on the Zoom right <laughs> to do it. So Daniela, please introduce briefly Vicolo Corto. Uh, where are you located? Uh, like two phrases about you. So um, our organization is called Piccolo Corto, and it's an international organization that is in Central uh, in the east coast of Italy. The city is Pesaro. It's not far from Bimini, if you probably have heard about it. And our organization is active since 2006 as an NGO. And um, we have been hosting and sending volunteers since 2012. 
We are uh, currently uh, coordinating uh, volunteers. It means that uh, we are not at the moment hosting volunteers in our own organization, but we are working as a kind of umbrella organization at regional level. So we are uh, cooperating with more than uh, 12 local NGOs and local entities, and we are supporting them um, to have international volunteers. So we are basically helping them through the whole process. So starting from the accreditation from the quality level process, um, then we apply for funding and we uh, provide them with volunteers during the year. So we are, um, this is what we do basically as a, as a hosting organization and coordinating, and then we send volunteers as well. So we are active to send Italian volunteers abroad uh, in European Union and also outside of European Union. Actually, thanks to Nadine, uh, we have now a volunteer in, uh, in Cambodia. And uh, yeah, so we are basically, we have created, the, I was not one of the, of the people who created the organization, but I, I joined just a few years later. But what I think is very important to say is that um, our organization started uh, as a follow-up of a youth exchange. So uh, exactly what Michaela said. So a group of young people met in an international project and when they came back, they decided they wanted to have an impact at local level. So they wanted to uh, organize something to allow uh, the friends they have just met to allow them to come to Pesaro. That from, that moment, from that moment, uh, so it started as a, as a free time uh, activity somehow. And then little by little, the organization grew. And in 2009, when I joined the organization, we decided to try to turn a free time activity into a job, into a part time job, which little by little became a full time job. Mm -hmm. So it's um, what I think is very important and relevant is that uh, it's possible to do things, it's possible to have an impact. And Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Corps can really give the tools uh, to, to develop. So you can learn a lot. You can, you can take part to training courses, to seminars, you can meet people, you can learn and you can yourself become an actor in your local community and at the international level. So yeah, now, I... yeah. So now um, we are hosting, we started to host only four volunteers when we started. And now we are coordinating more than 40 volunteers at the same time in the whole Mark region. So uh, it's a huge amount of work. We are not so many people, we are uh, four people for employees in the organization so we are working full time and but we really like it so sometimes it's really challenging we have been through two very hard and demanding years as all of us but i think what is really driving us is the is the idea that we can have an impact we had a lot of volunteers passing around so we were just counting them in the last three years more or less we have hosted and coordinated in italy more than 250 so uh, we gave the chance to more than 250 volunteers young people from all over europe and not only europe to to come and to change their life some some of them uh, took this experience as a, a learning and changing moment for their life. So we have a lot of success stories of young people who came for volunteering and then came back and started their own career. Then they, mm -hmm. they, they've learned, they have uh, realized what they wanted to do. Uh, yeah, I think to, to it's really like a turning point for many people. And I would say also for our coordinator, if I may say so, Katka, she also like went uh, to Portugal and experience the same thing. It changed her life and a point point of view, definitely. So, uh, Eliska, I would like to give a floor to you and ask you if you had uh, the possibility to go on some uh, volunteering projects and also introduce Mladen for Czech Republic. Yes, thank you. So, Mladen for Czech Republic uh, is a sister or brother. I don't know the gender of Mladen for Slovakia, but come on, it's fluid. Because <laughs> 
Yeah, usually we're just ladies here, problems to get male volunteers involved, I don't know why. <laughs> and uh, what we do, uh, we also have a website where we promote like several like opportunities uh, for Czech, but also like Slovak uh, young people living in Czech Republic. So it's uh, relevant for, for you as well. And we organize youth exchanges either here like in Czech Republic uh, or we are like sending uh, Czech teams abroad. Uh, and sometimes we are also like looking at least like for Slovak students living in Brno. So that's also relevant for you if uh, somehow you, you're here in Czech Republic. And uh, here in Brno, we have office right here at the main train station. I don't know if you've ever been here. And we have library of things here. So you can borrow here like tent or disco ball for your party or I don't know, some, uh, some board games, which were very useful during COVID times when we were bored as hell at home. And uh, right now we are hosting uh, two Ukrainian volunteers, uh, two really nice young uh, bright uh, ladies. Uh, and what do they do? Uh, they help us with organizing the youth exchanges, and writing uh, articles to motivate people like you to go abroad and not to sit on the couch and try to find something new and inspiring uh, for everybody. And back to your question, if I had the opportunity to go somewhere, I did. Uh, I was in uh, Turkey, in uh, Gaziantep, which is like near the Syrian border. And what I was doing there, it was... Uh, I was teaching like English to some like young people from uh, Afghanistan, also Iraq, and also, uh, oh, some of us there as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was really interesting because you had to learn like how to work with various group of people. Some people were fine, some people could be traumatized. So but we could choose what we would like to do and what is like um, fulfilling for us. So it was great, it was a lot of opportunities and uh, I'm really happy that I managed. And also Turkey is amazing. Uh, it was great to meet the people from like really different culture than, you know, going with me to Poland or I don't know, to Croatia or something. So this is something more like enriching. And it's definitely like opened my mind a lot. And now I see things really differently than my friends who have, for example, there, or been to Turkey, but just to all inclusive hotel. <laughs> well, I think that can be also a nice experience if you have the budget to go for all inclusive, but definitely doesn't. I recommend. <laughs> Great. Great. I would just jump to Gianluca. Uh, thank you for introduction, Alishka. And Gianluca mentioned in the chat that he's been also to Turkey. So let's please do tell. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've been to Gaziantep as well. In, in, in Gege, this NGO working with Syrian refugees. I was in, also in, in Gege. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But we, I think we, Ali we, Aslan, yes. <laughs> we also passed through, that, through, through Gege. It's somehow like a, a, a ritual now for, for a lot of uh, European youngsters. But this is actually... Uh, very interesting because um, an NGO in, 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 in such a place, such a harsh place where uh, somehow the, the, the war is so close and, and uh, so having Itali Italian but also people from all over Europe uh, getting there and, and uh, together working to, to bring some, uh, some, some kindness from Europe, some, some help from Europe. It's just, uh, it's just one of the wonderful stories that the uh, the European Solidarity Corps can, can only provide, yeah. That's great to hear. Uh, I also like see the stars on your t-shirt, so you're probably also like a European Union t-shirt or something right now wearing. I'm a European enthusiast, yeah. <laughs> well, I think all of us are. Uh, so I would like to introduce us also the Impact Hub Vienna, because as we know, there are multiple Impact Hubs uh, all over the world. And actually there is one in Bratislava as well. So please tell us how Impact Hub Vienna works and if you have also volunteers at your place. Yeah. So uh, first of all, what's the Impact Hub? Impact Hub is a network, it's a global network of working spaces and uh, startups, accelerators and incubators. Uh, we are currently in, in more than 60 countries all over the world. We are covering 
all the continents if we do not consider Antarctica as a continent. But if we don't, then we are covering the world, uh, the world continents. Uh, there are more than hundreds of impact tabs. You have uh, impact tabs um, basically all over Europe. Uh, all the countries apart from France are uh, fully covered. And here in Vienna, we have a community of 500, more than 500 uh, startups and uh, entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurs. So also uh, people that are working in big corporates, but that somehow trying to uh, develop impact or to have a, an impactful um activity within big, uh, big corporates. And we are, again, we're mainly a community. We're a community of people that are sharing the same, uh, the same set of values. Uh, we are a community that are working towards the same goal. So building a work that is sustainable and that could be uh, somehow available for each one of us. So um, a more just and uh, equal, uh, equal society. Um, at the moment, uh, at the Impact of Vienna, we are uh, hosting two uh, European Solidarity Corps volunteers. Uh, we have uh, Jon from Sweden uh, that is uh, taking care of the sustainability strategy of the Impact Hub. So uh, in Vienna here, we decided that uh, in 2025, we will have zero emission accomplished. So. Uh, we are uh, now planning this strategy together with Jan, which uh, he, is, uh, he studied uh, sustainability and he wanted to get that on practice. So yeah, we, did, we said, why not? Let's do it. Let's do that. Let's do that together. So uh, he is now taking care of this strategy and he, uh, it's, it's actually hard to reach that goal. And, but he's like laying the foundations uh, of this strategy that would, I'm pretty sure would bring us to this, to this goal soon. And then we have Pauline from, from France. Uh, she is, uh, she joined us as a community event coordinator and uh, she wanted to develop these skills in, in uh, project management and event uh, development. Uh, she's taking care pretty well of all the community events that are happening inside this big community and we need big events every month we have weekly events uh, so she's part of uh, the community team which is the team i'm uh, also part of and yeah so they're they're both uh, having a long term here in impact of vienna and soon uh, in 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 fall uh, they will finish their experience here and then let's see what that what happens probably we will hope a new uh, new positions with uh, with new goals and uh, set of skills that we will ask for. Thank you. Uh, that sounds great. We also learned a bit more about the task because also Eilish can mention what are the tasks when they're hosting a volunteer also for you. So I see that you've been adjusting quite a the tasks. So also when a volunteer is applying for the position, it doesn't necessarily need to be um, maybe something 100% related to the job, but maybe you can adjust the task a bit so that actually also the volunteer is happier and then can acquire a better skill set. Um, and I would also like uh, to ask Yuka uh, from the National Agency to tell us uh, about their activities regarding the volunteers, because we as uh, hosting organizations, uh, we are receiving them, uh, we are giving them tasks, they are having a supervisor, uh, but there is also the component of national agency for all of their countries. So uh, tell us, Ilka, please, what is the role? Because we mentioned already some midterm training, but maybe for somebody who is new, doesn't actually know what these trainings are and how many of them are there. Okay, so volunteers um, have, uh, they, should attend uh, four trainings, actually, pre-departure training, which is organizing a sending organization uh, before they go to they go abroad. And then uh, throughout the voluntary service, they have uh, two trainings. Uh, so it's on arrival at the beginning and midterm uh, in the middle of uh, of the voluntary service. And then uh, when they go back to their country, after some time, they have also annual training, which they can attend. It's not compulsory, but uh, it's nice like a re reunion and they, they can share uh, experiences with other uh, volunteers, ex-volunteers. 
I mean, uh, can I just ask, because it's like, we have these three types of trainings, uh, but when you come to the training, what can you actually learn? Like uh, if you are on arrival training, how does it look like? Uh -huh. on, on arrival training, mostly um, volunteers, they, um, they get to know the program better, like what they should learn, that they can get some certificate after, uh, after the volunteer service and uh, that it's called youth pass, everybody knows. And that like um, they should reflect on what they learned. So, uh, on, but on, then on midterm training, training they learn more about the process and also about the conditions and uh, offers what they can do after the program, after the project, because most of them they are like lost and they don't know what to do after uh, after the project. So they ask a lot. But there are also like um, different uh, icebreakers and even hiking trips, uh, exploring the city, depends where the training is, uh, building the relationships. And actually uh, it's good for volunteers to get to know other volunteers from uh, other cities and towns so that they can like visit them, sleep over their places. That Did sounds like that sounds online. lovely. Like when you have the friends all over the country. Also, that's one thing that Bridget actually mentioned that uh, she actually got to know a lot of people. And uh, Bridget, you mentioned that you also like visited some of your friends. So whether less these friends also coming uh, from like the midterm or on arrival training or how did you meet them? Uh, yeah, so I mean, I arrived during COVID, so I think definitely like it was quite difficult at the beginning, like I wasn't really able to meet people, but yeah, we had the on arrival training and we met a few people and um, from across Slovakia, I think we went to, um, to Trenčín, we went to Johnny Corbin, uh, Tanava, lots of different places um, and yeah, no, I met them from the training and it was really interesting because it was cool to see their projects and how it actually works and yeah, no, I was, I was definitely really appreciative for the training and I think there was lots of things in the training that actually, I mean, I think Ivanka mentioned um, like uh, how you're going to adjust when you leave the project and what happens after the project and for me this was really beneficial because it's true when you're in a different country for like 11 months you you're in like this um zone and you're in this like world that is completely different to your real life and readjusting when you go back home is it can be really difficult because things are just not the same and uh, I think actually the training it did uh, touch on that quite a lot and I think that was really good for me but yeah it was really good to meet different people and from different backgrounds definitely the training was you were able to really meet actual volunteers not just international people so yeah Oh, thank you for that. It just came like from the nothing out of the flu, a question to all of you, since all of you have done a volunteering in some, uh, to some extent, how was the adjustment process after you went back to your country? What did you do? So uh, let's start with uh, Gianluca, because again, he's the first one on my side. <laughs> so go ahead. I never came back to my country because I'm still here because I was a ESC volunteer here at Impact of Vienna, and then I got hired. So uh, it's, I guess it's like it's the a, best case scenario. It's, it's a best case scenario. So uh, I adapted to this country. I adapted my life to, to, to Vienna and it's pretty easy since it's one of the uh, highest uh, quality of life capital all over the world. And yeah, but I, um, as I said, uh, I'm also working in Italy uh, in an NGO working on European mobility. So actually uh, all these experiences that I had through um, through European Solidarity Corp and through Erasmus actually brought me also to that part of my career. And I'm now a youth worker myself and I'm working also to promote this, uh, these opportunities in my country and uh, to promote also uh, for instance, solidarity projects inside the European uh, Solidarity Corp, which is not a mobility opportunity, but it's still an opportunity that can uh, help you uh, having an impact on your local community. Uh, so in this sense, I think uh, all, all my European experiences uh, somehow changed my life in a sense that now they are my job and it's what I'm doing, uh, whether it's Impact Lab or uh, my NGO. Sounds great. Daniela, I'm not sure if you already had the opportunity to go for volunteering. No, I'm not 30 years old yet, so I think I'm planning to go soon, maybe this year. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah, I, I have been volunteering myself uh, more than 15 years ago. 
and I've been uh, EDS volunteer in Poland, in Krakow. And yeah, that, that really changed my life. So I still remember what happened when I came back to Italy. The feeling that I, I was feeling was really strong. And later on, I discovered that feeling, that mix of feelings. They had a specific name, which is called reverse cultural shock. But at that time, I didn't know. So I just felt I was, um, I came back to a place that, that was where I was not belonging anymore. Um, reality was completely different. My group of friends uh, with whom I've been uh, hanging out for the whole time before, they were completely different from my, my perspective. And I was an alien for them uh, from their perspective. So the impact was really strong. What helped me a lot was um, getting in contact with my former Sandic organization that was in my same town that really gave me the, the opportunity to get back to the feelings I was living during my EBS. So the feeling I had was really, I was lacking uh, oxygen. I was lacking breathing air. Uh, because coming back from an intercultural reality where you're living with uh, people from different countries, you live in different countries, you have learned a new language, getting back to your town, and then you, you, I was missing a lot of it. So and I started to hang out with the, the volunteers that were hosted in my hometown, and I started to volunteer in the organization. Mainly, I did it, I started as a very selfish uh, thing, so that I really needed, I had a need of uh, speaking English, getting in contact with international people, getting out of my comfort zone. And then I realized I could do something for, for them as well, and my former sending organization realized it as well. So they started to offer me little by little some small tasks more. And then let's say that all my career actually started in that way. So I, I started to do one year of, of national civil, uh, civil service in a local Eurodesk center. And little by little I, I developed. So yeah, but the, 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 the reverse cultural shock was really strong. And that's what I'm, I'm trying to say for all our volunteers, both the ones we are, we are, we are sent us with hosting, get ready for that because sooner or later it will happen. It can be stronger, it can be lighter, but there will be a shock. So it's up to you how to react and how to build on these feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this can happen after like already like also without the uh, within the Erasmus Plus mobilities, so like a uh, regular study or uh, traineeship mobilities as well. Yuka, how do you include this in, in the webinars? Or do you have yourself this experience of uh, reverse cultural shock when you came back to Slovakia? Because uh, just for introduction, Yuka has been also a volunteer. So you can also tell us about uh, your experience after coming back to, your, to the country. Yeah, my sending organization was actually uh, Mladi Info. So I have nice experience. Uh, I had pre-departure training with them. Um, I actually, I, I, did, I didn't have cultural shock. I can't say like it was, uh, I was happy I'm going back actually to Slovakia because for me it was like too active and too hot in Spain. <laughs> so I was happy. Uh, coming back and but you know general I had nice experience and for the reverse cultural shock uh, because you mentioned this annual training that you are holding for the volunteers is it something or for the mid-term training that you may be involved in the presentation that they might experience uh, something similar like a reverse cultural shock when they're coming back uh, I've never been to annual training, uh, to be honest, because I'm new in the, like I'm a newcomer in national agency, so I haven't experienced yet, and I haven't like uh, volunteers uh, didn't share with me, so I can't tell uh, really tell you. No problem. Yeah. We'll we're gonna see later on. Uh, but you mentioned the Spain was very hot, so you've been happy to coming back. Was it only the weather or? Uh, was it also something else? <laughs> in the winter, it was really cold inside. It was colder than outside, so we were not used to it. And uh, it was humid winter, not like in Slovakia. And we didn't have uh, central heating. So that was one, one of the problems. Oh, problems. 
but then even uh, the Spanish people, they don't take off their shoes when they enter the house. I didn't know about that before. Or maybe in some, uh, some families, it's, it's different. <laughs> it differs. Um, and like the language, I had uh, at, the, at the beginning, I uh, was not familiar with Spanish much. I just knew some uh, basic words. So I was all the time like perfecto, perfecto. <laughs> <laughs> but later on, I learned and uh, I'm happy for this. Yeah. Like, the skills I gained. Actually, I've been surprised uh, just to come back to Spain. I've been recently to Almeria to visit one of our volunteers. Uh, she's working in a like um, dementia related center for older people. And uh, I think we've been also struggling with the language and I do myself speak Italian. So I was like, yeah, maybe I do have a chance like to talk to some people around also like to order coffee, but like, I feel like the Spanish people doesn't really want to. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> even like the Spanish was really like, no, no, I don't understand Italian language It's not good. So yeah. I also like learned in, in my couple of weeks, like, yeah, like this is La Cuenta, like the bill to ask for the things. And I think also our volunteers that I met them uh, over there in Almeria, they also like had been speaking like a very little Spanish, but uh, this is maybe something that you can also gain as a skill from your volunteering experience because there is usually a mentor uh, that is uh, walking you through the learning process, but then you are also involved in the language lessons, which means that you can actually learn the local language. And we've heard Daniela that he can speak a bit of the Slovak language. So he probably learned also a bit of the Polish language uh, on his mobility. And uh, probably you guys also, uh, Ilka, you did uh, probably learn a couple of words if you mentioned, right? Uh, yes, yes, I, I could speak. Uh, in the end, I could speak, speak almost fluently now. It's been uh, like, for the three or four years after I came back and I'm not practicing much so I'm losing uh, my Spanish but I can understand a lot and yeah. I still watch the videos and <laughs> at least <laughs> that's always good uh, at least they are the like tv series that always help us like you know get into the language stay in it uh Elishka how was the turkey and the comeback for you university because our uh, our university had a lot of uh, Erasmus opportunities and they were begging us to go because nobody wanted to go. So we used the, uh, the uh, reverse cultural shock when going back home. But I always like was then like seeking like international environment like, later on. And it's not hard in Berlin because there is like a lot of international people. And like a couple months here in Maladie Info as coordinator. So like just a few months after I was volunteer myself, I became the coordinator and the boss finally of the volunteers. <laughs> so that was, was kind of like a quick uh, progress for me, but it's nothing like exceptional. I think a lot of people like after, you know, joining this uh, Erasmus and European Solidarity Corp family, let's say, it's, it's hard to leave it afterwards. So definitely there's a lot of opportunities and in NGOs like ours if you have the motivation and you're dedicated to the to the vision of, of, of these programs and for youth work in, in general and you don't have to be youth worker by school uh, or pedagogist but uh, certainly it's very easier for you than to to find your like dream job or or to continue in in like volunteering or or so on. Mm -hmm. So exactly, uh, I just got caught up in the discussion because this is also like interesting for me personally to hear your experiences, and I think also for the other people to know what to expect. Um, but I would like to ask you, uh, as organizations, what are the volunteering opportunities or the opportunities like uh, youth exchanges that you are holding this summer? So. What is there for uh, young people for the summer? Uh, Elishka, you can continue if you wish to, if you have some trainings, uh, because you can, yeah, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> I will be honest. I know Slovak people, they don't want to go to Czech Republic for projects because it's boring for them because it's not very cultural exchange for them, <laughs> which I understand, so it's totally fine. So uh, we don't have like, uh, we're not playing like some opportunities for this summer, but for sure we will be engaged later on with Mladinfo Slovica and their like future projects. 
So I hope we will draft something after the summer for, for the next for the next year. But if you're in Brno, you can borrow something from our library of things and uh, save money, of course, <laughs> or to join our like summer events, which we have here in Brno in the park. So you can like connect it with some sightseeing and, and so on. So, so what are these uh, local events? Maybe somebody, because it's like from Bratislava, it's just like two mm -hmm. hours, not even. And yeah. if somebody wants so to go for in, a trip. In June, I think 5th of June, we are like hosting with our uh, Ukrainian volunteers, like day for Ukraine. It will be some like artistic workshops. So you can try to create some uh, original Ukrainian traditional clothes or to maybe cook some food. So you can follow us on social media and definitely it will be on Facebook like an event, like an invitation. So you can so you can join that. And it's not really far away from Bratislava. So so why not? And then we plan to host like some uh, summer school of English language also in June, like some intense program to stretch the English language a little bit before the summer. So you're not uh, ashamed to order coffee abroad because you didn't speak for the whole year. So we're also doing that. So just follow us and you're welcome. Thanks. Uh, that sounds like a right promo, you know, follow us and you'll get more information <laughs> like you through marketing agency. I uh, will definitely share it with people because I know myself, we have a lot of stud Slovak students are studying actually in Brno and they can use this information and join you during their exam period, for example, to relax a bit. Uh, Daniela, what is there uh, in Italy? Because Marke is maybe not that popular as the northern regions, and it's a bit harder to get to, but it's a beautiful region with a con you are directly at the sea, basically. So it's really an in enjoyable uh, experience. So what can people do in summer in Vicolo Corto? Are there any volunteering options or uh, trainings? Yes. So um, we have several opportunities, actually. Uh, all of them are long-term opportunities. So. Um, it means that volunteers will stay with us for five, six months, more or less. And uh, we have more than 10 placements uh, already. So it means that the project is approved. And if one of you is interested, uh, you can come. The first one is starting in two weeks. So if today you have already in your mind that you would like to go for a volunteering experience and you are ready to go, in two weeks, so three weeks maximum, you can be in Italy already for six, seven months. I will share you the, the link of our website where you can find all the um, current open vacancies. As you can see, there are more than 10 uh, in different parts of market region. Um, some of them are by the seaside. Some of them are in a bit more uh, mountain area. We have almost every, everything that you could have, you could like. So we have projects in um, in the centers, in local centers of Red Cross, where the volunteer uh, will uh, support the local Red Cross center, not in terms of emergency ambulance, but in terms of supporting transportation of, of people from home to the, to the hospitals or to the daycare centers. Um, but at the same time, living in, an, in a very small uh, environment, which leads very uh, quickly to learn Italian. So all the volunteers that are hosted in the Red Cross centers learn almost perfect Italian, and to become very uh, soon kind of local star, a guest star, because the, the realities are quite quite small towns, and everyone will get to know you. Then we have some uh, projects in, in Pesaro, in a center for uh, reuse, uh, which is very interesting. Volunteers are supporting a huge center that is collecting uh, secondhand clothes and furniture, and they are uh, restoring them and uh, selling back to the, to the, to the, local, to the local people. Uh, and collecting money to give back to the, to the local community. So with the money that they, they raise, they are restoring public gardens, they are buying toys for kids, uh, they are really having an impact on the local level. Then we have uh, a project, a volunteering project in Senegal, city by the seaside, um, in a center that is called Le Rondini. It's an intercultural center um, to do activities with children. Uh, it's a kind of after school center. 
So intercultural activities, playing games with kids. We have almost every kind of <laughs> opportunity. So if you are interested, I really uh, suggest to, to check the link, uh, get in contact with Marie for Slovensko if you want to, um, to know more, because they have been sending actually some volunteers to some of our projects as well. So you can have as well uh, first-hand uh, reaction and first-hand uh, feedback for, from Slovak volunteers that we've been hosting. And yeah, so check them. Uh, I will share another link that is from our blog where you can read uh, the great. feedback. The feedback, uh, the, it's an article that we have just published uh, less than one month ago from the volunteers at Le Rondini Center in Senegalia. So they will, they will share uh, what is the meaning of volunteering there and what is their experience they are, they are living. So for any question, just don't hesitate to contact me or, or them. And we are really ready to host you. So get ready to leave in two weeks, in, in four weeks, in one month, and we are ready to. Thank you, Daniela. Uh, thank you for all of these opportunities. Uh, that sounds lovely. I, I cannot help myself, I laugh at least. So uh, I would uh, encourage everybody who really wants to go. It's a nice place, it's a nice region. And uh, yeah, for the language, it's the best if you're a bit is isolated from the international community. So you really get to know the language as well and the culture, uh, which is really, really nice. And uh, I would say uh, inclusive, like they were like welcoming you uh, to the centers. Uh, and uh, I will ask uh, Jan Luca now uh, to tell us a bit more about uh, the opportunities uh, for summer in Impact Hub Vienna um, and also maybe the local events that you're holding because again, we are close. We are just one hour from Bratislava, but also even maybe less. even less, yeah. <laughs> so go ahead. Yeah, so we do not have any uh, opportunity, European opportunity uh, for this summer because we currently have two uh, long term um, volunteers with the ESC programs that will end their uh, journey with us uh, in fall, uh, late fall. So if you're interested in joining a community of entrepreneurs and you want to, uh, to, to try with the Impact of Indiana, uh, maybe you can have a look again uh, on the youth portal uh, in, in, in fall 2022. Uh, regarding what we are doing here uh, in this summer, since we are uh, 30 minutes from, from Bratislava, we have a lot of events uh, this summer happening. If you want to network uh, with our uh, community uh, of uh, startups and entrepreneurs or social entrepreneurs, uh, you can have a look on our uh, Facebook page uh, or Instagram pages, and we have uh, all of our scheduled events there. So uh, we have networking events, we have uh, ventures fairs, um, we also have master classes from um, people that are um, actually helping uh, startups and, and uh, newcomers in the entrepreneurship world and social entrepreneurship world to get more uh, investments, for instance. Uh, so there are a lot of opportunities in this sense. Mm, what I would love also to promote is the uh, Solidarity Project uh, deadline in October, uh, because when we talk about uh, European Solidarity Corp, normally we tend to think about um, all the mobility opportunity, but uh, in my opinion, one of the most interesting opportunity I met myself uh, a coach in a solidarity project are the solidarity projects because you can develop an idea for your local community. You can start having an impact in at, in your local community uh, with a group of friends because these kind of projects, the solidarity projects are open to informal groups. Uh, so you can get the support of a coach uh, of, or of an organization, uh, but still developing your idea and uh, having the level of impact you and your group of friends or your group of colleagues want to have on your uh, local, uh, local in your local context. Uh, you have a wide range of uh, topics that you can, uh, you can uh, develop a project on, uh, but the deadline is on the 4th of October. So if you want to apply for that deadline, you should start thinking of it now. 
thank you for highlighting that because really it needs time to prepare and especially if you are uh informal group you really need to establish all of those textures i really think it's true because an organization might be more prepared than you are uh, so just check out and also if you want to we can give you some uh tips and you can come back to us as well um and i would like to ask uh yuka because uh juventa and our national agency for youth they are having and hosting also a lot of events throughout the whole summer uh so i would like you to highlight a couple of them and then uh, we will just uh, do a like a closing session for this discussion. Uh, okay, uh, so we have, you mean like in general, we are having for young people, for example, those who would like to write maybe solidarity project, uh, which we haven't mentioned, that they like five people of uh, the- Jan Luca mentioned the, this yeah, project just okay. right now. Okay. Yeah, so um, uh, we have escalator, uh, training for young people. They can uh, they can find out more about uh, uh, how to write solidarity projects. Uh, then I'm thinking for other. Well, we have all also cross um, uh, crossover, but this is for another uh, key action like uh, how to write um, K2 project projects. Uh, it's for organizations. We had it uh, three weeks ago. Uh, and uh, next, uh, in one week, I think we will have um, um, something for young leaders, for, for the, like young people who would like to become leaders, the training. Um, I think if there are like but, any festivals or any like outdoor activities or information activities for the summer, because I know that you're also like, like to go to many places. I mean like and, for Hoda, for example, festival. Yeah, for example. Where we, where we promote uh, the program, you mean? Yes. Uh -huh, awesome. So like, uh, yeah, throughout the summer, we will go on Pohoda festival, uh, where all like different um, music bands will play music and we will have like we will promote the program also young people they can find out more and we have also prophecy days today uh where the, like people could uh, find out more and those people who are uh, looking for the job or, or other opportunities and they could they could learn good mm -hmm. i would maybe just highlight that you are pretty active also on Facebook and Instagram, and that you have uh, the list of events always registered on Facebook. Uh, so maybe I would ask Mishka, my colleague, to put the link for Juventa in the chat. And um, we can definitely include it because we are planning to do a brochure for all of the possible events for the summer uh, and education programs as well. So we will definitely include also the escalator, as Ilka mentioned, that's something uh, really nice to know and uh, to have before you apply for a project. Um, this brochure uh, will be published like a week later after the click until we uh, collect all of the information and uh, you will have the opportunity to go through all of them. Also those who were mentioned today, but also those who are just submitted to us uh, because we've been communicating with other organizations for their summer programs uh, and a couple of them uh, are having really nice opportunities for you to go abroad, but also to do things in Slovakia. Uh, to participate on events or participate on some education workshops or just maybe to hang out as, uh, for example, we in Modi Info Slovensko like to organize uh, language coffees uh, so we can actually practice the language and uh, maybe just to hang out and speak a bit more about like different cultures, uh, etc. So uh, there will be this brochure that you can uh, have a look on uh, later on. And now I would like to uh, thank you guys. Uh, and if you want to say like one phrase to motivate the people to go on uh, on the volunteering or to do something active during the summer, uh, here you go. Okay, I will go first. Um, that uh, I knew since long time, but just came to my mind a few minutes ago and then you, you will understand why. So the sentence says something like, if you think you are too small to have an impact, try to sleep with a mosquito in your room. And 
<laughs> I have a mosquito in my office now. <laughs> and I, that really came to my mind. So don't think you are too little. Don't think you cannot have an impact. Uh, you can do it. Yeah, it's really, it's really easy. And Erasmus Plus and European Solidarity Corps uh, can give you really the handful of tools to, to take your, your life in your hands and decide what to do. Thank you, Daniela. That's, that's great. I will hang this one uh, on my wall. It's really funny and it's really the thing to the matter. Uh, anyone else want to motivate the people? <laughs> Well, I'm so glad that I don't have any mosquito in my room at the moment because they really bug me. But yeah, what I can add, I mean, uh, Daniela already uh, told basically everything, but uh, normally we are asked to be proactive on our job place, uh, but actually you should be proactive in your life in general. So take action because sometimes it's also a matter of six months opportunity and that is a life-changing experience or even two weeks or even one week with a youth exchange and still that one week that you've been proactive to it changes your life so um changes your perspective which is all that matters thank you yeah for me i would say that um, just do it like i would never have experienced like Slovakia to have such a massive impact on my life and it's completely changed my perspective and yeah just do it 100% I wouldn't I wouldn't even try and have too much expectation because whatever expectation you have it will be completely exceeded because yeah definitely the best experience of my life and I just learned so much definitely. and I would add that if right now on your mind is like a long list of reasons why you cannot join because you think it's not possible, please focus on the reasons why you can do it because everybody can. There's a lot of opportunities. You don't have to fight for the spot. The only thing is to want to go. And it's really easy. It's so easy that it's not even possible. <laughs> so everybody has a shot. Doesn't matter if you had bad grades at school, or you were fired from a job, it doesn't matter. None of this matters. The only thing that matters is that if you want to go in, and you can. Thank you, Alishka. Uh, thank you guys for the, the motivation. Uh, I think like we feel the energy and the flow. 